Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mission TV show. We're doing a special taping today here at the OCI Leadership Retreat in Cahutta Springs, Georgia. It's about an hour away from our studios, but we're here because um, a lot of leaders from around the world, from different OCI ministries are here for um, uh, fellowship, for uh, learning, and for comparing notes and things like that. So we're here to meet some of these missionaries from around the world, and today's We've got a special guest on our show. His name is Pastor Sylvester Tembo. He's all the way from Africa. Pastor, where, what part of Africa are you, are you living in currently? I'm living in Tanzania. Uh -huh. And is that, are you on, which ministry are you with? I'm working with the Kibidula, uh -huh. a self-supporting ministry. In okay, and that's an OCI? Affiliated That's, ministry, right? Is that on the um, northern, northwestern side of Tanzania, or on down near the ocean? Well, it's almost on the central part of Tanzania. How far away from it is uh, Kilimanjaro? Well, I think it's about a twelve hours drive. Away. Twelve hours drive. Mm -hmm. Wow, I thought uh, Kilimanjaro was near the central part, but it's up at the border. Right? It's close to the border with Kenya, so it's up north. Okay, so you're more on the southern... On the southern side. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, what kind of situation are you in there as far as the environment? I know Seren Serengeti Park and is very famous and stuff like that, but what kind of area are you living in there? Well, we are in the area that is quite close to the south, that it doesn't have much of what we would call like... Um, tourist attraction, okay. but it's more in the area where people are doing some subsistence farming. Uh -huh. And uh, we are in an area where the government has so far much grown the pine trees for government use and for other people that would like to get them uh, lumber, you know, things like that for in, uh, inside export, mm -hmm. outside also they sell out. Uh -huh. So... That's the area. It's more busy, well known for the forest land. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, um, what's the population density? I mean, like, is there a lot of people there? Is it sparsely populated? Or? No, there is a lot of people. I think, if not mistaken, maybe somewhere around 500,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the name of the ministry that you're working at? That you're it's called Kibidula. Kibidula Farms. Farm Institute. Institute. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are the ministries that are in that, in that, in that uh, ministry? There is the School of Evangelism, of which I'm heading, uh -huh. and there is a uh, lay missionary program. Okay. There is agriculture school, uh, uh -huh. primary school, and um, we have other programs that uh, help to serve the community based on the students that we have there. Oh, very good. I understand you have some pictures for us that you would like to show. Yes, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here we, here's the map of Tanzania, mm -hmm. and this is where you're at right here? Yes, Iringa. Okay. That's where we are. Are you on the river then? We are not very much on the river, but we have a bit of a river that passes through our property, uh -huh. which is called the Ruaha River. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the Indian Ocean, this is Eastern Africa, and over here is India. Madagascar is That's down right. this area. That's correct. Okay, and you're surrounded by Kenya, Nairobi up here. Mm -hmm. Where is Mount Kilimanjaro? It would be somewhere in this area? Mount Kilimanjaro is in Arusha. Right in here? Yes. Okay, so that's about a 12-hour drive. Okay, oh, so it's a large country. It's a big country. Yeah. Indeed, it is. Okay, and this is a photo of... That's the aerial photo of uh, Kibidula Farm. Beautiful. The campus that we have, we have two campuses over there. There's the lower campus and the upper campus. Oh. Now this has to do with the lower campus where we have much of the agriculture program and education program mm. going on. What's on the upper campus then? On the upper campus we have um, the mechanic shop uh -huh. and the other houses there that uh, in the past we used to do the lumber ministry. Mm. So that's where much of the cutting of the wood and the taking the trees, putting them to the lumber mm. was being done there. I see, mm -hmm. I see. So that is, you're no longer doing that kind of work? No, we're not doing that now. Okay, so your part is the, uh, uh, again, evangelism director? Yes, please. So the evangelism school is on this campus here? Mm-hmm. This one, down over here. 
That's huge. Well, we have uh, classrooms over there, and this is our cafeteria there. Uh -huh. This block, we're using it for the agriculture school, and uh -huh. this block, we're using it for the evangelism school. Okay, so how many students do you have in your school? Right now, we have 13 students, but we have the capacity of taking 30 people. 30 people. Mm -hmm. And what age groups are we talking about? Beginning 18, up one, okay. 40, 50. <laughs> Whoever has a heart for it. That's right. Okay. And so how long is your training program then? It's a four months training program, okay. but we do it twice in a year. Ah. The first part of it is January through April, uh -huh. and then we have a two months break, uh -huh. and then come back again in July up to October. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now is that the, the local language there, is that Tanzanian language? Swahili, Swahili. language. Swahili. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's done in the Swahili language then? Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Okay, so then when they graduate from that program, they become Bible workers or what actually do they do? Yes, they become Bible workers. Uh, fortunately, we had uh, some discussion with the church leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt that it would be very, very important if uh, churches themselves would look for potential young people that have the work at heart, mm -hmm. whom they can send over so that we can train them mm -hmm. and then they go back again to their churches. Mm -hmm. Before that, we could get almost anybody, but mm -hmm. most of them wanted to look for some sort of employment mm -hmm. where they could be hired and do the Bible work program. Mm -hmm. But when they couldn't find something like that, mm -hmm. then they were disappointed. Uh -huh. And sometimes uh, there were no people that would say they would take them up uh -huh. If some were taken, the problem would be when they were taken somewhere else where they are far away from their people, mm -hmm. they would get discouraged and then go back home. Uh -huh. So we thought if churches that know the environment where they are, they, have they that can... support group. That's right. So, so that one we've seen it working very effectively. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. So what is, a, um, let's say, the uh, normal uh, living wage for a month? for a Bible worker like this? It's about $80. I see. Mm -hmm. So does Kibadula support some of the Bible workers they have? We have 32 Bible workers that we are supporting oh. from the same training program. Very good, very yeah. good. Are, are you open or desiring sponsorship for some of these Bible workers? Oh, sure. Actually, most of them that we have, we have some sponsored for them. Oh, very good. They have supposed, some of them sponsored one or two. Uh -huh. And uh, Kibidula as an institution also, we have few that we support from our resources. Uh -huh. But uh, almost, uh, I would say, 80% of them, they are donor-based supported. Okay. Very good, very mm -hmm. good. Okay, so then this is uh, one of your classes. Yeah, this is one of my classes here. Uh, what actually happened uh, here was uh, our lay Bible workers. Mm -hmm. We normally meet them every six months. Mm -hmm. We let them come so that we can share the reports, give them encouragement, mm -hmm. polish them up a little bit. Now, when we did that for so many years, we realized that there is the other side also that needed to be worked upon. Mm -hmm. We thought of their wives, mm -hmm. that we can incorporate them into the program so that they know what their husbands are doing. Oh, really? So we had this time last year where we were able to get all of their wives and then he put them into the program that would help them how they can best support their husbands. Well, praise the Lord. How's that working out? It worked out very well, and they loved it, and we hope to continue doing it. <laughs> very mm -hmm. good. Very good. Okay. You've got a primary school here. Right. Uh, we decided to have a primary school because in our staff needed to have their children get a Christian education. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we felt uh, we have resources mm -hmm. that we can provide that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy because most of the people that uh, we lived among us mm -hmm. didn't seem it was going to be a good program. Mm -hmm. We met some opposition. Mm -hmm. But we started first with our staff children. Mm -hmm. So when we got them, as we went through, some people began to see something good in that. Mm -hmm. So they began asking if we could provide the same services to their children. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, we have more uh, requests than we, can, we could easily accommodate. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So um, primary school in, in your system is first through sixth grade? 
to seventh grade. Seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay, agricultural training center. In our agriculture training program, when we did some survey in the villages around us, mm -hmm. we saw a number of young people that when they are done with grade seven, especially those that couldn't make it to go to form one, mm. they were not doing anything. So we felt, well, we should find a way of how we can serve them. Mm -hmm. So in our discussing and looking at what we could do, we realized that something can be done for them mm -hmm. if we can introduce a program that would give them some incentives, especially that it's an area where it's more typical in the villages. Mm -hmm. We said maybe this can help them if they go back, they can sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. So we began first, it was a three-year program, but mm -hmm. now we have reduced it to a two-year program. Mm -hmm and uh, it is funded by Rich Switzerland. Very they are not uh, paying anything. It's a free offer that we are providing to them. And how's that program working out? It's doing very fine. Excellent. Very fine. Excellent. Mm. Okay, so what is this group of happy people? These are some of our first graduates that we had of the School of Agriculture. Fantastic. So this was on their graduation. Mm, very good. They look, mm. That's a large group. It, it was. <laughs> It was. Very good. You do publishing also? We do publishing also. We have worked on a program that helps us get some of the books that are LNG White Books, Spirit of Prophecy. Uh -huh. We have seen that because Tanzania is more of a Swahili speaking country, mm -hmm. many people don't have access to the English uh, books. Sure. So we thought if we can be of good help then we translate some of the books that are so much needed yeah. into the local language and then present and give them to them. How many Ellen White books are translated into Swahili at this time? Uh, so far I think uh, I wouldn't be very sure but not uh, less than ten. Ten books? Mm -hmm. That's very good. So the church has done some translation also? The church have done their part and we have done our part. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so this is, you're actually printing these on, ca on campus there? No, no. We, we get some people to help us from outside I the see. country. We have a printing press there in Tanzania, but uh -huh. most of our books uh, normally we do them here in the States or uh -huh. in Europe. I see. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Okay. These are some of our cow porters, maybe some of the workers that we have, and these are the books that we are trying to dispatch to different. We used to have about 22 bookstores all over Tanzania. Wow. We get the books, then send them out, and these were working with us. And this woman over here, she's one of our most reliable person that was able to get these books to other people in Tanzania. Wow. Mm. So are they selling these books as cow porters? Or? Yeah, most of the cow porters were selling them. And we were able to provide them at least at an affordable price mm -hmm. where they can reach the people. And they're popular with very, the people? Very, very popular. Really? So mm -hmm. there's a hunger for this kind of material? Very much. Really? Mm -hmm. So you see, you know, we hear a lot of stories from Africa about a lot of people really you know, taking a hold of the gospel there. And, and big changes um, happening and a shift to, to Christianity and stuff. Is that what you're seeing in Tanzania also? That's actually what is happening. And in fact, you know, books being the silent witnessing, they easily go into the homes of people. Huh. And uh, we have had a number of stories of people that were converted because somebody dropped a book to them, somebody sold a book to them, wow. or somebody shared something in the book. That's great. That's mm. great. What's the most popular book over there? The most popular book we ever had was The Great Controversy. Really? Mm -hmm. It's very, very popular. Because that talks a lot about European history. Mm. Um, is that what they have learned in school? They've learned some of that in school, but yeah. much of it has to do with the spiritual the side spiritual of it, side. and that's what has attracted them so much. Interesting. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You have Desire of Ages in Swahili also? Um, I'm not sure if we have that one uh, printed out in Swahili. Really? But I think there is a cry for it. Yeah, I mm -hmm. can imagine. Life of Christ. Okay, mm -hmm. so who is this young man? This young man is one of our trained uh, lay Bible workers that we had. Uh -huh. He is sent in one of the villages and he has worked very hard. Mm -hmm. 
that in his program, he has been able to bring in a number of people in the church. Mm -hmm. He's a, a good preacher. Mm -hmm. He loves the people. Mm -hmm. He's getting down to earth where people are, mingle with them, you know, like that idea of Christ method sure. alone. Yeah, he's done that, and he's one of our trusted lay Bible workers Praise that him. has worked hard in most of the hard uh, places. Mm. For example, we had sent him to one of the places in the Maasai area, mm -hmm. and a Muslim filled up place. Mm -hmm. He did very well. Praise the Lord. He did very well. Praise the Lord. What's his name? His name is Amos. Okay, so Amos, we can pray for Amos. We can pray for him, really. Very Thank good. You. Very mm -hmm. good. So here's some evangelism happening. Yes, these are some of the programs that uh, our lay Bible workers do. Those that Kebidula is supporting, mm -hmm. when they are given that opportunity, they go out. Normally, they come up with a very good number that they start with who are ready for baptism. These are the people that are ready for baptism. They just got baptized. These are the baptized people. Right. From how many Bible workers? Uh, this would be two Bible workers, sometimes, two Bible two, sometimes one. If a husband and wife team. Two Bible workers brought in this number of souls mm -hmm. and studied the Bible with all of these people. Right. In groups? And in groups, in family setups. Wow. Mm. That's amazing. That's like 100 people there. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. And how often will a Bible worker uh, have this type of uh, baptism, this size of baptism? Maybe twice in a year. Twice a year? Mm hmm So like almost 200 people, one Bible worker. That is very much year. possible. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and then what does he use to study the Bible with them? Does he give them Bibles to start with? Does he use Ellen White materials? Or do they just go through some tracts? Or? No, th th there are some tracts that uh, we had prepared. Mm -hmm. And we had light bearers print them for us. Mm. So we gave them boxes of mm -hmm. those materials that they would have individual classes with people. Mm -hmm. So that's the materials that they were using. And mm -hmm. sometimes even just the Bible. Mm -hmm. In areas where maybe people are very uh, not comfortable with the tracks, we let them use the Bibles because they study their Bibles so much. They have put certain lessons from the Bible that it helps them to have classes together with the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, they use the Bible and the tracts together. Praise the Lord. That's fantastic. Okay, here's an airplane. Mm. Are you, is this part of the mission? Yeah, this is part of the mission. We have places where our lay Bible workers live mm -hmm. that you have no access with a vehicle. You can't really? get them there. Just because of the terrain. That's right. No roads. That's right. Wow. So this little plan helps us to take the supplies to them. Uh -huh. Sometimes maybe to take their stipend. And um, if we need them for some meetings, the go picks him, brings him to the place where we have the meeting. Uh -huh. And uh, just the needs for them, we use it to help get there. Praise the Lord. How long has this been flying? It's been flying from the time, I think it should be early 90s, when okay. Kibidula started. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, um, when I was uh, 10 years old, my father uh, re did a relief term for a doctor in the Kenya hospital in Botswana. Okay. So I, I spent six weeks there. Mm. So, and we flew out to different places in that area to do, um, you know, mobile mission, mobile medical clinics and stuff, so. In fact, initially, when we started with the plan, it uh -huh. was meant for medical, uh, medical uh, missionary program. Okay. And it did very well when we had our clinic running, but mm. this time we don't have the clinic running. So instead, we have shifted the focus to the lay Bible workers. Supporting the lay Bible mm. workers. So mm. you have a pilot. Yeah, actually, our director now, he's a pilot. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. And you're missing some medical personnel? Is that what you're needing? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So have, you have they decided to close that program, or are they just looking for somebody that can fill that need? We're just looking for somebody that can fill that need. What kind of medical person? Like a nurse or a doctor or what? A doctor, a nurse, who are most welcome. If we can have the nurse, but since the... The, the, the government requires every nurse to operate under a doctor. Uh -huh. 
would rather look for a doctor, a doctor who can be able to find a nurse that can work with him. And do you have a facility there? We have one of the old clinics that we're using, the uh -huh. facilities there. Is there a need in the area for medical Yeah, very work? much need, uh -huh. very much need. Uh, although this time it has come to the point where we have a few villages around us that have had small clinics, mm. we are trying to shift now their focus into a, a lifestyle. Uh. So we are hoping in the near future we can also have a lifestyle center. Very nice, mm. very nice. That's wonderful. Oh, that's cute. Mm -hmm. Are they pray. These are branch Sabbath schools that we normally conduct almost every week, uh -huh. where our staff go out and uh, help to teach the children, the church members there, uh -huh. share and have fellowship together with them. Very nice, mm -hmm. very nice. Okay, so if somebody wanted to come and be a part of Kibidula, mm -hmm. um, would they need to learn the language or it, it, would it work? Is it, is it something that Kibadula is is willing to work with. I mean, like, if, we want to, if I wanted to volunteer um, at Kibadula, mm -hmm. is that an option, or are you mainly looking for um, local, uh, national workers there? In spite of looking for local people, we still need the expert aid from outside the Tanzania. Okay. When they come in Iringa, where we are there is a school, a language school. Mm -hmm. For those that would be interested to learn the language, they can go there for a couple of weeks, or maybe months, mm -hmm. then they learn the language, then come back. But then there are other people that we understand too that uh, they are able, as they mingle together with the people, they tend to learn the language uh -huh. easy. Uh -huh. For example, I originally come from Zambia. Uh -huh. I didn't uh, know Swahili. But when I got there, I needed to learn Swahili. For the first two years, I was quite a handicapped. <laughs> I needed to teach, to share things with other people through an interpreter. Mm. But uh, that wasn't enough. I needed to get into the system myself and learn the language. Yeah, so then, by mingling with them, mm -hmm. I was able to learn the language so quickly. Because then you can speak into the heart language. Right. What are some of the needs you have at Kibadula? Some of the needs that we have right now is uh, we are looking for an accountant. Okay, very important, accountant, very missionary important. accountant. That's right. We are looking for a doctor. Mm -hmm. We are looking for somebody that has the um, talent in the book department, literature oh. to acquire, to, who can organize the whole thing and maybe make it more uh, uh, attractive, this more is the viable. Publishing or the sales or the call porter work? Almost those. those together. Okay. Uh -huh. But right now we have uh, one of our brothers that is quite talented. Mm -hmm. he, he does the uh, accounting, he does the publishing, mm -hmm. but he still needs some people that can help so that he can get into something that he's really called for to do. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have an accountant, a book manager, shall we say, mm -hmm. and, and a doctor. Or publishing director, I would publishing say. Dire okay, mm -hmm. publishing director and a doctor. And a doctor, and uh, also a farm manager. A farm manager, mm -hmm. somebody that can... Um, teach, you, of course you're teaching the, the farming, correct? Mm -hmm. So would he be a teacher also or, or mainly focusing on the farm itself? And Both. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and what kind of things do you grow there? Is it similar we, to what we grow here in America? Or? Not very much. We grow maize, beans, sunflower. Uh -huh. um, those are major crops uh -huh. and uh, soybeans. Okay. Vegetables that we normally use every day. Okay, and how large is the farm acreage? The farm acreage is almost 5,000. 5,000 acres? That's right, almost. Wow, that's bigger than my house. <laughs> 5,000 right. Is it mechanized? You have tractors and things like that? We don't have many tractors. We have one or two tractors that are operating there. Mm -hmm. But we have a problem also in that the soil in which we are is not very fertile. Mm. But uh, we need somebody that can improve even on it if it right. is going to be possible. Sure. For example, on the, still on the farm with the school, agricultural school program, mm -hmm. we have had the school divided into three units mm. where we have given students each a plot to work on mm. 
and uh, that has improved the soil in the section where they are working. Mm -hmm. But the other areas, it's not very good, but we hope to plant some avocados mm -hmm. that we have seen that they're doing very well. Mm -hmm. Now we want to make them, uh, maybe grow them on a larger scale so mm -hmm. that they can also bring us some income. Right. Now, if you have a farm manager that understands and knows what he's doing, mm -hmm. I think those challenges would put him in a place where he can see what can he do to sure. improve the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fantastic. It looks like uh, we've got your website up here, um, uh, www.kibadula.org, mm -hmm. and then your email uh, is mail at kibadula.org. Right. And of course, we can also go to the outpostcenters.org and find your your ministry listed under there. Right. Very good. Mm -hmm. Would you like to make a like a one minute appeal or 30 second appeal to our viewing audience um, uh, to get involved with this work? Sure. Thank you, Pastor. Well, viewers would be interested that uh, you become partners with us in this program. We are training young people. We have limited, we have limit and we need to get your support that you can pray with us, you can uh, morally support us, you can also financially support, uh, the, for example, the lay Bible workers. And uh, in the School of Evangelism, we have students actually that come there, sometimes they lack the support. Each donor can be able to help one student every session that can come there it would be a worth investment. Praise the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Pastor Tembo. I appreciate you coming on our show. Thank you so much also for inviting me into this show. Thank you. And thank you, viewer, for joining us with another episode of the Mission TV show, recording here at the OCI Leadership Retreat in Cahada Springs, Georgia. God bless. <laughs>